Okay, welcome to Topic 5, Chapter 5, Human Population Growth. And this week we are going to be looking at how the size of the human population, how the resource use of a particular population, both um, combine together to impact the environment. So I'm going to begin with a case study uh, from your textbook, but it provides some information that isn't listed there. Um, so first of all, China's population is the largest population in the world, followed by India and then followed by the United States. There are um, over 1.4 billion people who live in China, and it's roughly the same geographic size as the United States, where we have a little over 300 million, 330 million people. So this is a very large population. But what I want to tell you about right now is what happened between 1959 and 1961 in China. There was uh, a very rapidly growing population at that point in time. And there was a drought. And also there was political mismanagement where the uh, government at that time decided to mute, move people from being farm workers to producing steel. And as a result, their food production fell dramatically while their population continued to rise. And there, were not, there was not enough food produced in order to sustain that population. Um, factored into that also was they also fabricated harvest reports saying that there was plenty of grain when in fact there was not. And it took about three years for the government to come to the realization that this course of action was not uh, was not working out very well and as a result about 30 million people died of starvation during that period of time and in addition to starvation which is terrible enough there's also undernutrition and malnutrition undernutrition not having enough calories malnutrition not having enough of certain nutrients such as vitamins and both of these situations can damage the growth and development of children, and particularly children's brains, the nervous system, uh, cause blindness, and other things. So in addition to the 30 million people who starved, there were also a number of uh, children who suffered through malnutrition and undernutrition. So in 1970, the government reacted to the continued population growth and continued resource use with a one-child policy, which has since then, in 2014, it was relaxed. But the one-child policy um, was controversial because it include, included uh, forced sterilizations, forced for abortions, and things like that. Um, in order, And they did this in order to keep the population growth rate to be in check. And they brought down the population growth rate so that now there are, on average, one and a half births per um, couple, or one and a half births per female. And even at this rate, it's going to continue until uh, the population is going to continue to grow until about 2040. So, what is the lesson here? One lesson is that we need to very carefully manage the growth of human populations because you can deplete your resources, including food and water. And um, another lesson, which is a little bit more of a recent lesson, is that as this country economically develops, resource use per person increases as well. So, for example, in the United States, we have very high resource use. Um, and we have, you know, so many cars, for example, each family having a car, sometimes more than one car per household. And that type of consumption compound, compounded with a large population size um, isn't sustainable. So now I'm going to take you back to a previous slide from uh, the previous chapter. And... This is just talking about any population in the wild. And in the beginning, when resources are not limited, population size increases exponentially. And then as that population reaches a limit for the carrying capacity for that particular 
ecosystem for that particular population, growth slows and eventually falls to zero. And overall, this forms moves from a J-shaped curve to an S-shaped curve. And as I mentioned previously, the, the carrying capacity may occasionally be overshot, and then there would be a dieback, um, but hopefully it would level off to this level. So again, carrying capacity is the limit of how large a population can be sustained in a particular ecosystem based on the limiting resources, particularly food and water. And what we want to look at now is whether human populations are also bound by these same growth models. And we're going to start by um, looking at projections and what influences population growth. Okay, so this graph is a very important graph showing from the current times going back thousands and thousands of years ago and looking at the human population size. Going all the way back to the advent of agriculture in about 8,000 years before the Common Era or 10,000 years ago. And you can see if you only looked at the portion of the curve going up to say 1600, there is a steady increase in human population size. But after 1600, or after the industrial and agricultural revolution occurred and improvements in sanitation occurred, then there's a huge spike, a J-shaped curve. And the question is, are we going to be then reaching our carrying capacity and leveling off? Was uh, the Earth's carrying capacity for human populations lower than this, in which case there might be an overshoot and a dive back? Okay, so let's take a look. At what scientists are projecting. So there are different models regarding the food supply and population size. Some models show that populations um, will, if populations continue to grow in this J-shaped fashion and the food supply continues to increase but not at the same J-shaped rate but more of a, a, a straight logistical curve here, then there will be a food deficit and there will not be enough food for the human population size. Other scientists believe that innovation, in particular with um, agricultural technology, will lead to plenty of food in the future. Uh, <clears throat> more scientists do tend to be concerned about a food deficit at this point in time, and we'll take a look at that more when we're looking at food production in general or agriculture um, in a couple more chapters from now. So now we need to look at some factors that drive human population growth so that we can understand where we might want to um, change those factors so the population growth can be managed in more sustainable fashion. So we'll look at changes in uh, population size. We'll look at each of these things, fertility, life expectancy, the age structure diagrams uh, for individual countries and the issues of immigration and emigration. So first we'll just look at overall changes in population size in a particular country, for example. Two of the factors are immigration, or people moving into that area increasing the population size, and emigration, people moving out of that area. Also, the other factors that add to the population are the number of births and uh, lowering the population, the number of deaths. So if the number of deaths was higher than the number of births, you're going to get a decreasing population. If you have more births in a particular period of time than you have deaths, then you're going to have an increasing population. Okay, so these numbers can be quantified to better understand how rapidly a population can grow. So first we're going to look at two terms here in green, crude birth rate and crude death rate. So crude birth rate is a number of births per 1,000 individuals per year, and the crude death rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 individuals per year. Um, to give you an example, in 2010 worldwide, there were 20 births for every 8 deaths per 1,000 people. 
Now, if we're going to look at percentage change, you need to take this number of 1,000 and change it to 100 to get a percentage. So we're going to take our birth rates and we're going to and death rates and divide them by 10 to look at percents on the next slide. So the change in population would be the crude birth rate, 20 births, minus the crude death rate, 8, and divided by 10 to get the percent. And you can see the population was growing at 1.2%. Doesn't sound too bad, right? So 1.2% seems pretty low, but in fact, it can lead to rapid change in population size. So I'm not going to go through how this number come, it, uh, was defined mathematically, but there is a rule called the rule of 70 that's used to approximate the doubling time of a population in years. So the doubling time is 70 divided by the um, annual growth rate. So using the rule of 70, if a population was growing 2% per year, it will t double every 35 years. So basically, 2% growth rate still means a doubled population in basically one generation. And that can become significant, um, a significant number when you look at uh, a time span. So, for example, if a population doubles every 40 years and that population began with 125 million individuals, after 40 years there would be 250 million. And then another 40 years, they're not 125 plus 250, but the 250 is doubled to be 500 million. So in a span of 80 years, um, that population would have gone from 125 million to 500 million. It's almost the, the opposite direction of the, the, what we saw with half-life. So this is doubling time, and it can be significant. I'm going to pause the screencast at this point, end the screencast, and move on to a new one.